Uh, hi, I'm Bob, and this is my guide to the Remote Tech 2 mod for Kerbal Space Program. Uh, I'm using version 1.2.6, which is the one that has the flight engineer, sorry, that has the, uh, the flight computer, but does not have KOS integration. And it seems like that flight computer is giving people a bit of trouble, so that's mostly what I'm focusing on with this mod, with this uh, video. Um, see, I'm assuming that you already know orbital mechanics and how to build, you, you have a good understanding of the stock game and you can build ships and fly them to different places. I want to say thank you to, I can't pronounce his name, Kilf, Silf, Cliff is what I want to call him, but that's not right, um, for making this mod. It's excellent. It adds a lot and uh, it's an interesting way to make things difficult, so thank you. Uh, let's see, for this tutorial I am using the remnants of an exploration mission to EVE that I did, totally unmanned. Uh, the basics, basic mission was I had a four probe package all on one transfer stage and then uh, I launched a second uh, interplanetary relay that I stuck in a polar orbit and that's also a mapping satellite with the uh, ScanSat mapping mod. Um, so yeah, down to the flight computer. Uh, the basics with signal delay, which you can see up here on the left corner, is that there's nothing I can do with this probe that will happen before this timer counts down. So let's say, for example, that I want to turn my engine on. This, uh, this engine hasn't been activated. The probe worked pretty well in its original orbit. I thought I might need to move it, but I ended up not having to. So I never even turned the engine on. Let's say I want to. Um, I activate it and nothing happens. Uh, it's not that nothing's broken, I have a good connection, but if you bring up the flight computer window and hit this Q button, you can see this command that I've entered and a time counting down to when, uh, due to the speed of light, uh, that signal will reach this probe and the command will execute. So if we fast forward time a little bit, you'll see it execute and hey look, the engine's on. So. Uh, naturally this makes flying anything by hand really hard and uh, it, the same things apply to if you do like pitch roll and yaw flying things the same way you fly everything uh, but they don't show up in this window but yes it basically makes it almost un impossible to fly these probes by hand so instead what you use is this flight computer to control burns and to control the direction of your craft so let's say i want to point orbital prograde what i can do is hit um, this grade button and it's going to hold orbit prograde but obviously there's a countdown so if we fast forward time it drops us out of warp and we point towards orbital prograde now this isn't a really well tuned uh, flight an autopilot you see it bounces all over the place it works better for some ships than for others um, but a way to cheat that is if you use little burps of time acceleration to stop the rotation um, yes it's cheating no it's not realistic but um, if it was the real world we could tune the flight computer to work better with the craft so I don't feel bad about it um, now let's see so we've got all these different directions we can point uh, orbital pro retrograde radial plus and minus normal plus and minus and those directions if you've never used like say mechjeb's uh, smart ass those directions correspond like that's normal plus and that's normal minus uh, radial plus and minus and so you can uh, point your ship in any one of those directions or say you've made yourself a maneuver node you can tell it to point towards that maneuver with the node button you can also, with a surface button, you can point, say, surface prograde and retrograde as opposed to orbital, so uh, for re-entry and that sort of thing. And then uh, target pro and retrograde, that sort of thing, could be useful for rendezvous. Uh, par, parallel, I'm not sure. I haven't used it. But uh, mostly orbital is the one you'll use. You can also use, um, you can give manual headings, which help, so just pitch, roll, and yaw. Um, if you have a need to do that. Below that we have the throttle control which is pretty simple if you've got a slider and then you can burn for a given time or the thing that's not obvious is you can burn for a delta V value so let's say that we want to burn for a hundred meters per second we can uh, type in a hundred meters per second and when we click the burn button we'll get our delay and then it will execute. So let's say I'll give you an example problem. We will cancel all of these out. Orbital 
cancel that. Just trying to zero out this window here that we have. Da, 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 da. Okay, cool. Just, no, no, you need to be off too. Okay, so example problem. Let's say that we want to circularize this probe's orbit. It's pretty eccentric right now. So what we'll do, you already know how to do this. We'll make a maneuver node here and then uh, hold it retrograde till it flips around 13.5 and 14.8 close enough for uh, government work, right? So we've got our maneuver node that you want to execute, and obviously we can't fly it the same way we're used to, so we bring up this flight computer, and uh, we are going to schedule our burn using uh, signal delay. Uh, let's see, we know that we want to do a burn of 147 meters per second, and we know we want to execute that burn in 2 hours, 41 minutes, and uh, a couple of seconds. So now there are a few ways we could do it. We could uh, say point retrograde the whole way there. We could point towards the node the whole way there. Or we could be smart about it and say plug in a total delay of uh, say 2 hours and 39 minutes. Which gives us time to align but the probe's not trying to hold a heading the whole way there. It doesn't make a lot of difference but I think it's neater. So um, by the way this delay window will take time in seconds. Or say we want to uh, plug it in in hours it'll accept that as well or hours, minutes, and seconds. So I say I plug in an hour and you get 3600 seconds. It automatically converts. So let's plug in our delay for two hours and uh, let's say 39 minutes and 30 seconds. S then hit enter and it's figured out our delay and we know that this entire maneuver is retrograde. We're not burning in any other direction, so let's just point retrograde rather than using the maneuver node. That way, if I, for some reason, delete this node, it will still work. And also, you know how uh, burns get squirrely towards the end where the blue ball goes all over? Um, this will avoid that. It won't wind up trying to chase it and get crazy towards the end of the burn. So whenever possible, I like to use uh, cardinal direction rather than just using, um, rather than using the maneuver node. So we've got this command executed, and what's going to happen is about, we plugged it in with, what, 2 hours, 39 and a half minutes, and uh, we sent the command with about 2 hours and uh, 40 minutes, basically a minute early. So a minute before this node, it's going to try to point itself retrograde. Now let's plug in a delay. Normally you do this all at once, but I've been talking too much. Let's say, let's plug in a command for 2 hours, 39 minutes, and uh, 30 seconds. Sorry, 38 minutes. And that's minutes, not seconds. So, slightly lower delay. And uh, we probably want to start this burn uh, 15 seconds early. We'll make it 10 seconds early. So we know we want to do 147.5 meters per second burn. And remember to slide the throttle up. It defaults to zero. So, uh, obviously, it's not going to work. So when it hits, say, 40 seconds, right, because we got 30 seconds plugged in, I will hit this burn button. There. Okay, so now we've got um, it'll point retrograde about a minute and a half early and about 10 seconds early it will start this burn and uh, it will burn for exactly 145.7 meters per second. So let's see if that happens. Unless I mess something up. So it, it'll automatically drop you out of time warp but uh, let's let it go. Yeah, uh, well, I worked out my timing a little bit wrong, because clearly, but let's see if it'll still work. Uh, okay, cool, there we go. Um, yeah, so obviously I did my mental math wrong, and I started out a little early too, but now we wound up, you saw I did the burn, and uh, we wound up pretty close, actually. This is our actual orbit, this is the one we planned. So that's the uh, basics. You can do this, say you're doing your first launch out at uh, KSP, or Kerbal Space Center, and you uh, need to do your circularization burn, but you don't have a uh, signal. You can, um, instead of launching into a weird orbit that you don't really want, you can just program your burn uh, for some time in the future, and um, if you're quick with menus, you can make that work out. Obviously, you don't have to work with signal delay nearly as much because I'm forever away. 
Uh, let's see. Other so I think that pretty well covers the flight computer. Um, other little things. Let's see. Now basics of my constellation. Back home, I set up uh, basically four satellites in elliptic orbits. Uh, it seems like most people want to set up uh, everything in a circular orbit with satellites equally spaced out. And that works great for a little while, but then when you time accelerate, they get bunched up and you start uh, losing coverage. And if they're in a geostationary orbit, you'll lose coverage for a very long time while it takes. Uh, so that can work, but I don't like it. Uh, there was a forum post. I I went back trying to find it again so I could give him credit, but um, I can't find it. So if you can send me the link, I'd appreciate it. Uh, but basically, the guy explained that using four elliptical orbits works much better because um, when a satellite is passing through uh, the low portion of an elliptical orbit, it's moving very quickly, whereas while it's out here, it's moving a lot more slowly. Basically meaning that these satellites will spend most of their time up high, even though I seem to have come in at a time when they're not. Uh, so the advantage to this setup is these orbits won't precess around in KSP, and basically I keep good coverage everywhere, even if I time accelerate for years, and um, it won't change. So uh, that's what I went with. Um, and I also added a single satellite in Kerbo stationary orbit uh, right above the Space Center, which uh, basically gives me a backup. This thing has a good, has dishes pointed at all these others. Um, everything has long range dishes pointed at everything else. And um, as far as the altitudes of the orbits, this I put about as low as I could. I think it's like 80 kilometers. And uh, the altitude of the apoapsis is, I picked 19,000, or 1,900 kilometers. And that's because the range on the, uh, the Omni antennas that I have at this point in my career uh, are 2,500. So I can, um, basically that'll reach from here to halfway through since the radius of Kerbin is 600 kilometers. So that seems to work well enough. Um, it's not perfect coverage, but it's good enough for almost everything. Now for interplanetary communication, I used uh, two satellites in polar orbits and kind of high, and these all have long range antennas pointing at everything else as well. And the cool thing about those satellites is uh, no matter where I go in the Kerbal system, in the solar system, uh, I'll always have line of sight to one of these unless I go behind some other planet because they, um, I'll say when this one goes behind Kerbin, I'll have line of sight to this one, which works pretty well, but. Um, the one problem I've run into is that the uh, field of view on those big dishes, which is the one that I'm using, uh, the field of view on that dish is not that good. It's actually, if I point it right at Kerbin, um, it will, I, it, I lose my connection, so I have to po actually point it at one of those relays and deal with the signal outages, which is fine. Uh, for the EVE system, I just use one relay because I don't, with, uh, since I can queue up commands, I can, um, I, well, I don't have to have perfect coverage, except for sometimes, and I can do critical operations. I can just wait until I do have coverage. So that works out well enough for me. So I think that pretty much covers everything. Um, obviously, as far as the basics, I, I guess I never talked about it. Uh, you have long-range dishes, short-range dishes, and uh, omni antennas. And uh, in order to have a connection, both antennas uh, have to be in range of each other. So it's defined, basically the, the length of a connection is defined by the range of the shorter antenna. And that's kind of important. Um, so say I have this big dish pointed at one of these dishes, uh, the range is this the range of this small dish. I don't get any bonus for using this big overpowered antenna on the other. So um, I was I think in in the old version it allowed you to it, it gave you like a one and a half multiplier for using a long range dish, but that is no longer the case. So um, yeah, I think that covers pretty much everything. If I forgot anything, let me know. And um, yeah, thanks for watching.